Hi everyone and welcome to our new video comparison. This time we're comparing the Canon EOS R and EOS RP to see if there are any important differences in their video capabilities. If you want to know more about how these two models compare for stills photography, make sure to check our complete article on our website mirrorlesscomparison.com. Both cameras feature a 35mm format sensor. The EOS R has 30 megapixels, whereas the RP model uses 26 megapixels. The EOS R can record 4K up to 30 frames per second, whereas the RP can record just 24 or 25p. The EOS R has a higher bitrate of 480 megabits per second if you choose the all intro compression. With a more standard IPB compression, both cameras record at 120 megabits per second. In Full HD, the EOS R goes up to 180 megabits per second or 60 megabits per second which is the same bitrate found on the RP model. The two cameras also have a light IPB mode that records at 12 megabits per second if you need smaller files. Internal recording is 8-bit 420. The EOS R can output 10-bit via the HDMI output unlike the RP model. Both cameras have a microphone input and a headphone output and their LCD screens can be opened to the side and rotated 180 degrees which will please vloggers. This test was made with firmware 1.10 on the OSR and 1.0 on the OSRP, the latest available when we produce the footage. The first thing to mention is sensor crop. The still picture you see now was taken with the RF 35mm prime lens and if you record 1080p footage, you can see that the field of view remains more or less the same. However, when recording 4K, both cameras apply a severe crop as you can see. Now, I initially thought that the EOS R crop would be more severe because of the higher megapixel count, but after redoing this test multiple times, I concluded that the sensor crop is quite similar on the two cameras. My measurements suggest it is closer to a 1.75 times crop, which is even higher than the 1.6 APS-C crop. A 1.75 times crop means that my 35mm lens gives me an equivalent field of view of approximately 61mm when recording in 4K. So if you need to record wide scenes, you need to look for short focal lengths or perhaps some APS-C lenses that you can mount with the RF to EF adapter. And surprisingly, the image quality you get from the two cameras is similar. They share the same list of feature styles and the color palette is comparable, with the RP model being a bit warmer especially in the yellow areas. Skin tones are nearly identical. The portrait style brightens the skin and shifts a little towards red. Personally, I prefer to use the neutral or faithful profiles instead, which I found gave a more balanced result with less contrast. Within each picture style you can adjust various parameters including sharpness. With the same settings, both cameras deliver very similar results. The EOS R has slightly crisper details since it uses a few more megapixels than the RP model, but it's nothing that you can't equalize in camera or in post-production. Note that some profiles are much softer by default. For example, the neutral style initially has the sharpness value set to zero, and the difference is quite significant. So if you ever find yourself wondering why your EOS R or EOS RP footage doesn't look sharp enough, make sure to check which profile you're using and which value the sharpness setting has. There isn't a lot to say when it comes to high ISO performance either. Both cameras have a normal range that goes from 100 to 12,800 ISO and extended values go up to 100 to 1,400 ISO. Both cameras perform well up to 3200 ISO, but noise becomes more invasive from 6400 and really bad from 25600.
You can set noise reduction in four steps to minimize the amount, although sharpness is sacrificed a little as a result. Here as well, the two cameras behave in the same way. Neither camera has in-body stabilization, but you can activate a function called Movie Digital IS, which is basically software stabilization. It can be used with or without optical stabilization, but if you mount a lens with IS, the camera will combine optical and software stabilization for better results. Of course, due to the software stabilization, your field of view is cropped even more. You can see how it changes between optical stabilization on its own, Digital IS enabled and Digital IS enhanced. The performance is once again similar on the two cameras. With static shots we can notice a bit of jittering and the EOSAR seems a bit more stable with the first mode. Panning shots look good with both settings and when working the enhanced mode performs quite well. Of course, it also depends on how you walk. You can notice in some moments that the camera shakes more because my footsteps are heavier. In terms of dynamic range, we can start to talk about more relevant differences. With the standard or neutral profile set to ISO 100, they deliver the same amount of details in the shadows and highlights. There are two settings to control dynamic range. Auto Lightning Optimizer is supposed to adjust brightness and contrast, but I find it to be ineffective on both cameras. Highlight Tone Priority gives you a few more details in the bright areas, however. The minimum ISO sensitivity becomes 200, and as you can see, there are more color details in the window. But the most notable difference is that the EOSAR has the Canon Log Profile, which can be set in 8-bit or 10-bit, with the latter being available via HDMI only. You can record at low ISO values, but keep in mind that the first normal sensitivity with C-Log is 400 ISO, so any values less than that will result in reduced dynamic range. If you like color grading, C-Log can be used for a variety of situations. You can also choose which color matrix to use. Cinema EOS Original is closer to the Canon Cinema Camera Series, whereas Neutral is more faithful to the real colors of your scene. Another setting you'll find on both cameras is called HDR Movie. This is not a hybrid log gamma curve, but rather a function where the camera is merging multiple frames to increase shadows and highlight details so it probably doesn't suit fast movements very well. It only works in 1080p and on the RP model, you can't control exposure manually. Both cameras feature Canon's face detection system, called Dual Pixel CMOS AF, which is very fast and precise for both stills and video. Here we come across perhaps the most important difference between these two cameras. When recording 4K, the EOS RP relies on contrast detection rather than phase detection, and as you can see, it is much slower as a result. This is really a shame because in Full HD, where both cameras use Dual Pixel CMOS AF, they are very quick at changing focus. With phase detection, we can see that Dual Pixel CMOS AF makes the EOS R much quicker in 4K once again. Sometimes the OSRP will take forever to adjust focus like in this example, whereas in other cases it was faster. So really, with conscious detection, you're never sure what you're going to get. Interestingly, the OSRP can enable eye detection in addition to face detection and it works with Servo AF too. 
it detects the eye fairly well, but again, the performance is limited by contrast detection in 4K. In Full HD, the RP is much faster. Note that eye detection for video and continuous autofocus should come to the EOSAR via firmware update. Make sure to check the description or pinned comment on this YouTube video for an update about this. You can use the touch screen on both cameras to focus and track a subject. With the AF track sense and AF track speed settings, you can easily perform slow transitions between two focus elements. Note that these two settings are not available with all focus areas and can be used when recording 4K with the EOS RP because of contrast detection once again. Sharpness and details are not as crisp as 4K, of course, but the quality of both cameras remain good in Full HD, especially if we consider that they use the entire width of the sensor. In 1080p you can record up to 60 frames per second if you want slow motion capabilities. The EOS R can record up to 120 frames per second but the resolution decreases to 720p. Rolling shutter is not great on either camera and looks slightly worse on the RP model. So, that's it for this comparison. Please visit our millerscomparison.com website for a complete test of these two cameras. Don't hesitate to leave a comment and see you next time.